So Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we are reading from the Bhagavad Gita as it is by His very divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Srila Prabhupada. We're reading from Chapter 7, Knowledge of the Absolute, and we're doing Text 14. And uh, I know um, Mother Parvati told me it, it was done before, but she wanted me to do it again because you can always glean something, even if from, from the Vedic scriptures no matter how many times you have read it or heard it, you, ca you can hear it again and again. So, and this verse, I'm sure is familiar to most of all of you. Daivaye shagunamai, mama maya duradyaya, mama evaye papadyante, mayam etam tarantite. Okay, so we'll do the word for word. Daivi. Daivi. Transcendental. He, he, certainly, certainly. Isha, Isha, this, this. Gunamai, Gunamai, consisting of the three modes of material nature, of material nature. Mama, Mama, Mai, Mai. Maya, Maya, Energy, energy. Duratyaya, Duratyaya. Very, very difficult to overcome, Mom, Mom. unto me, unto me. Eva, Eva, certainly, Ye, Ye, those who, who. Prabhadyante, surrender. surrender. Mayam etam, Mayam etam. Th this illusory energy. energy. Taranti, overcome. Te, they. they. Translation and purports by Srila Prabhupada. This divine energy of mind, consisting of the three modes of material nature, is difficult to overcome. But those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. Please repeat. This energy of mind, <coughs> consisting of the three modes of material nature, <coughs> is difficult to overcome. <coughs> but those who have surrendered unto me <coughs> can easily cross beyond it. Purport. The Supreme Person of God has innumerable energies, and all these energies are divine. Although the living entities are part of His energies and are therefore divine, due to contact with material energy, their original superior power is covered. Being thus covered by material energy, one cannot possibly overcome its influence. As previously stated, both the material and spiritual natures, being emanations from the Supreme Person of Godhead, are eternal. The living entities belong to the eternal, superior nature of the Lord. But due to contamination by the inferior nature, matter, their illusion is also eternal. The conditioned soul is therefore called nityabhada, or eternally conditioned. No one can trace out the history of his becoming conditioned at a certain date in material history. Consequently, his release from the clutches of material nature is very difficult. Even though that material nature is an inferior energy, because material energy is ultimately conducted by the supreme will, which the living entity cannot overcome. Inferior material nature is defined herein as divine nature due to its divine connection and movement by the divine will. Being conducted by divine will, material nature, although inferior, acts so wonderfully in the construction and destruction of the cosmic manifestation. The Vedas confirm this as follows, Mayam tu Pakritim Vidyam Mayinam tu Maheshwaram. Although Maya illusion is false or temporary, the background of Maya is the Supreme Magician, the person of Godhead who is Maheshwara, the Supreme Controller. Svetashvatara Upanishad 4.10. Another meaning of Guna is rope. It is to be understood that the conditioned soul is tightly tied by the ropes of illusion. 
a man, a man bound by the hands and feet cannot free himself. He must be helped by a person who is unbound. Because the bound cannot help the bound, the rescuer must be liberated. Therefore, only Lord Krishna or his bona fide representative, the spiritual master, can release the conditioned soul. Without such superior help, one cannot be freed from the bondage of material nature. The devotional service or Krishna consciousness can help one gain such release. Krishna, being the lord of illusionary energy, can order this insurmountable energy to release the conditioned soul. He orders this release out of his causeless mercy on the surrendered soul and out of his paternal affection for the living entity who is originally a beloved son of the Lord. Therefore, surrender unto the lotus feet of the Lord is the only means to get free from the clutches of the stringent material nature. The words mom, Eva are also significant. Mom means unto Krishna, Vishnu only, and not Brahma or Shiva. Although Brahma and Shiva are greatly elevated and are almost on the level of Vishnu, it is not possible for such incarnations of Rajagun, passion, and Tamagun, ignorance, to release the conditioned soul from the clutches of Maya. In other words, both Brahma and Shiva are also under the influence of Maya. Only Vishnu is the master of Maya. Therefore, he alone can give release to the conditioned soul. The Vedas, Swetvastara Upanishad 3.8 confirmed this in the phrase Tam Eva Viditva or freedom is possible only by understanding Krishna. Even Lord Shiva affirms that liberation can be achieved only by the mercy of Vishnu. Lord Shiva says Mukti Parata Savisham Vishnu Eva Na Samsayaha. There is no doubt that Vishnu is the deliverer of liberation for everyone. <coughs> So the translation again is, this divine energy of mind, consisting of the three modes of material nature, is difficult to overcome. But those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. So um, in here, Krishna is, is um, talking about his innumerable energies and about how these energies are divine. And he's saying that the, that divine energy belongs to me. So do the living entities who are part of his energies. And so it means we're all divine. So that's nice to know that we're divine. And we're also um, uh, have a superior power. But it's being covered by Maya. So, mm, so Maya has two aspects. She has the covering and the throwing aspects. And so, um, unless we're able to surrender, there's no way to get out of it. We can look in the material world and see how everyone is suffering. But also in here, it says about um, how we have to find a superior help. But in this world, this material world, nobody wants to think anyone is superior. Everybody wants to be superior. They want to be the controller, they want to be the enjoyer, they want to be um, the supreme over material nature. But we can see what a mess they're making of everything. You know, the, the material nature, the, everything's being polluted because everyone wants to think, I can control it, I can, I can you know, lord it over material nature. So, um, so it, he's also saying that we belong to the eternal spiritual nature of the Lord. And so, um, in Bhagavad Gita 15, the Lord says, Mamai Vamso Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana Mana Sastani Indriyani Prakriti Stani Karshati. The living entities in this conditioned world are my eternal fragmental parts. Due to conditioned life, they're struggling very hard with the six senses, which include the mind. And so this material, and so we're in this material, we were in this material contamination and it keeps them eternally in illusion. So contamination means that 
the, the living entities are all polluted, you know, by their contact, even though they're of the superior nature. And Prabhupada often gives the example of the ocean and a drop. So we're only the drop in the ocean. If you take a drop of water out of the ocean, it has all the properties of the ocean, but it's a small, fragmental part of the ocean. It's not as big as the ocean. So we all have these, um, these qualities, but we're also called the uh, marginal because we can go either way depending on how we are using our free will. And he's also saying that uh, to be released from the clutches of material nature, first he says in here, he says, hmm, being thus covered by material energy, one cannot possibly overcome its influence. Then later on in the paragraph, he says, consequently, his release from the clutches of material nature is very difficult. So first, it was not possible, but then he's saying it's difficult. And so later on, he talks about how we can overcome it. So first, we'll talk about in the beginning of the second paragraph, um, it begins with another meaning of guna is rope. And it's to be understood that the conditioned soul is tightly tied by the ropes of illusion. So what are these ropes? What are the gun these gunas? So these gunas are material nature and the gunas are, can either be in goodness, passion, or ignorance. So in goodness, the conditioned soul is happy sort of, or thinking he's very happy. In the mode of passion, the spirit soul is very active. And then in the mode of ignorance, the spirit soul is in ignorance. And there are different types of psychological manifestations for these. So he can only be released by a person who's liberated. So who is this liberated person? It's Iha yasha hare dashe karmana manasha gira nikhil ashvapya vastasu jiva mukta sa uchite. So he is one who acts to serve Krishna with his body, mind, intelligence, and words. He's the liberated person, even in this material world. And this, this um, verse comes from the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1 to 187. So this whole struggle and the, the living entity is trying to act out desires that he brought with him from his last birth. So, you know, he's trying to be happy, but it's impossible because we can see everything in the material world is miserable. And the only happiness you can get is, I used to call it the space between the happiness is the space between two problems because the problems continually come, you know, and disturb you. So that happiness is when, you know, like, okay, I have some time when I can be happy and nothing's happening in between. But material nature is full of problems. That's the, that's our, this, this material world is for our rectification. So we're going to suffer. Even though we think we're happy, we're going to struggle for money. We're going to struggle to survive. We're going to struggle to, you know, especially if we think we want more. And the nature also of the material nature is that it's never enough. So the living entity keeps struggling and struggling and wanting to get more and more and squeezing out of material nature. But actually, material nature is squeezing him, especially with Krishna as time, you know. So he's wasting his valuable time of life, this human body, by trying to accumulate material things and not try to find the purpose of life. So um, I wrote something from the first canto 837, um, the, the perfection of life is to become dependent 
on the will of the Lord instead of becoming falsely independent in the material world. Those who try to become falsely independent of the Lord are called anatta, or without any guardian. Whereas those who are completely dependent on the will of the Lord are called sanata, or those having someone to protect them. So uh, Prabhupada said we must try to be sanata so that we can always be protected from the unfavorable condition of material existence. So by the deluding power of the external material nature, we forget that the material condition of life is the most undesirable perplexity. And then in Bhagavad Gita 7.19, it directs us that after many, many births, you know, um, we finally begin to realize that it's not working. So what do I do? I'm, I'm lost, you know. I'm, I'm a unable to figure it out what to do. So if you're fortunate, then you meet a spiritual master. Mm -hmm. And so it says, without such superior help, one cannot be free from the bonds of material nature. No matter how much we think we can figure out, we are unable to figure it out. It's like um, I was reading in the Srimad Bhagavatam, I think it was five, called The Forest of Enjoyment. And it talks about how deluded we are and what frustrations come, you know, by trying to lord it over material nature. So then he goes on to say that Krishna, being the lord of illusionary energy, can order this insurmountable energy, energy to release the conditioned soul because he is the supreme will and she is under his control. So, and it also says he orders this release out of his causeless mercy on the surrendered soul. So, causeless mercy is that we didn't earn it, nor do we deserve it. But because it's his causeless mercy and he loves us, and it says out of his paternal affection for the living entity, who was originally a beloved son of the Lord, you know, so he doesn't like to see us suffering. He wants to see us happy. And being happy means going back home and really, you know, pushing on and try to go back home and work on this process to, to try to meet the goal of going back home, back to Godhead. Because he wants us back more than we actually want to go. I used to tell my gurus that he was pulling me because I was, I was always dragging my feet. You know, to, he would pull me to do this. Actually, it's true. He had to pull me to do so many things that he wanted me to do. You know, just like, just you, you ever see someone, you know, you're pulling them, but they're feet, you know, they're holding on to the ground and you're trying to pull, but they're like, they're not releasing themselves, you know. So, so it's saying, therefore, surrender unto the lotus feet of the Lord is the only means to get free from the clutches of the stringent material nature. And a lot of times I look up some of the words here to make sure I understand perfectly what it means. And so stringent, it means strictly controlled or enforced. There's no, no way to get out of it, no matter what you do. It's, it's strictly controlled and enforced, you know. <laughs> And uh, I, I was thinking to a class by Shaitanya Charan, and he was giving an example of um, you, someone is going to the house maybe to make a delivery or to see someone, but as you come into the gate, there's a guard dog, and he's growling and showing his teeth. I, I'm talking about a dog. I had an experience this week when I went to Nepal to deal with my visa, but that's another story with a dog. <laughs> <laughs> but, and he, he didn't have a master, nor was he chained. <laughs> but, uh, so when you, when you try to get in the house, the dog won't let you in. You know, he's like barking and growling and you're like afraid. You're like, oh, can he call his dog off, please? You know, and then the master from the house calls and immediately the dog goes back, turns and goes to his master. So Krishna, if we surrender to Krishna, then he can call off his, his maya from us, you know. And so we should, you know, definitely try to take shelter of Krishna and be his dog. That's why we wear our, 
our Kanti Mala because we are Krishna's dogs. And then uh, in this last paragraph, he's saying the word mom, Eva, also significant. Mom means unto Krishna, Vishnu only, and not Brahma or Shiva. And then he explains how Brahma and Shiva are ele greatly elevated and almost on the level, but because they're also under Maya, I mean, we can see, or when we read in the Srimad Bhagavatam, some of the pastimes of uh, Brahma and Lord Shiva and Indra, you know, the demigods, how they also come under illusion. You know, like for instance, in, when Brahma was creating, he was in illusion and he ran after his daughter. And then uh, um, Lord Shiva gives these boons, you know, but then the, uh, there was one boon he gave to, I forget the person's name, maybe, I don't know if he was a Muni or not, do you remember his name? Uh, was it when he wanted the ability to, to be able to crack someone's head? You know, he, uh, who was it? Rick, hmm? Okay. And then after the person got the boon, then he turned around and started chasing after Lord Shiva. You know, so sometimes they give boons, you know, to those who ask for it and it comes around and bites them instead. And then uh, Lord Indra, you know, who was, um, you know, this is also an example of how we, you know, the living entities think they're enjoying in the material world. It's like Lord Indra, I, I mean, Lord Indra is, you know, the king of the heavenly planets, but yet he became a hog and, and just thought he was enjoying eating stool and didn't want to leave his family, his, his wife pig and his children piglets, you know, so, and they were calling him back, but he didn't want to go. So this is like us. Like we, we think, no, this is so nice. I'm having such a good time. You know, this is, this is really great. I'm happy. I have my wife. I have my children. I have a good job. I have a house. I have a car. I have everything. I'm enjoying. You know, but actually we're not enjoying because the, the, the innate quality of, of our innate quality is spirit, soul, and our constitutional position is to be a servant unto Krishna. That's our true happiness. It's the only way we can be happy. And we've all had times when we've served Krishna and we can feel the happiness, you know, the, the devotees are happy and we become happy just by serving the, the Lord because when we're happy then if the Lord's pleased then we're also pleased. So that's our eternal position is to please the Lord, do everything we can to, to please the Lord. So he's saying that only Vishnu is the master of Maya. Therefore he alone can give release to the conditioned soul. And it says freedom is possible only by understanding Krishna. So um, I was thinking about this freedom, freedom from, we also have to be free from, from body identification, saying I'm Indian, I'm black, I'm white, I'm this, I'm this, I'm a woman, I'm whatever, you know. Our eternal identification, like, like heat to fire and liquidity to water, we are part and parcel of the Lord, you know. So that is our natural position and we're actually pure souls. So we just need to work on, um, we're all here, you know, we're listening to the Gita because we want to hear about the Lord, you know. So we just need to keep hearing and speaking about the Lord and we're here to remind each and every one of us as we take association of each other what is the goal of life? That's why we're in association. Actually, we're very f so fortunate that we're, we're able to associate with each other and remind each other of what the goal is and to support one another 
you know, when we are stumbling or struggling in our spiritual life. Um, <clears throat> so I just wanted to um, talk about this surrender to, to, uh, to Krishna or to a spirit bona fide, bona fide spiritual master. And Prabhupada always says bona fide, and he says bona fide because there's so many charlatans out in the world, and people become cheated, and he doesn't want any of us to be cheated. So bona fide means in the prampara. You know. Uh, <coughs> So I'll just read, um, I'm going to leave time for questions or additions or comments, but I'll read this from Canto 5, 14, text 41. Um, in the middle of the paragraph it says, however, if by Krishna's grace one is fortunate enough to come under the shelter of the Guru, by the mercy of Krishna, he received lessons on how to execute devotional service to the Supreme Lord. So, I, this devotional service also, I think of it as, uh, it's a training program. We're learning how to serve the Lord and what, you know, how to, how to dress him, how to feed him, how to do all kinds of services to please him. Because if we didn't have this training program, what would we know? Because I remember thinking, you know, when I wasn't in devotional service or in Christian consciousness, thinking that everybody's talking about heaven, but nobody knows what you do in heaven. And my question was, what do you do? Would you just stand around and look at one another or just, they always say, oh, sing all the time, but what do you do? There must be something you have to do. <laughs> yes, but in other religions, they don't teach that. You know, they don't tell you how, what, what, what does it mean to go to heaven? What does it mean to be in another, you know, higher space or heavenly plants or whatever? They don't tell you what that means, you know, what do you do? So here we're learning, what do you do? You serve Krishna. So, um, in this way he received a clue of how to get out of this continuous struggle up and down within the material world, like a Ferris wheel, or like those hamsters on the wheel, you just keep going around and around and around, you keep coming back and doing it again and again, you know, like that, frustration. Therefore, the Vedic injunction is that one should approach a spiritual master. The Vedas declare, Tarvijnatam Sagurum Eva Begachet. Similarly, in Bhagavad Gita 434, the Supreme Person of God advises Taiviri, Paniparthena, Pariparshnena, Sevaya, Upadekshanti, Tegyanam, Gyananas, Gyaninas, Tadvadarshanaha. Just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively and render service unto him. The self realized soul can impart knowledge unto you because he has seen the truth. And then Sri Bhagavatam 11, 321 gives a similar advice. Tasma Gurum Papadhyata Gyanasu Shreya Uttamam Sabjay Pare Chanishnatam Brahman Brahmanya Brahmanyu Pasham Rasham Masrayam. Any person who seriously desires to achieve real happiness must seek out a bona fide spiritual master and take shelter of him by initiation. The qualification of his spiritual master is that he must have realized the conclusion of the scriptures by deliberation and be able to convince others of these conclusions. Such great personalities who have taken shelter of the Supreme Godhead, leaving aside all material considerations, are to be understood as bona fide spiritual masters. So, the conclusion is always, throughout all the Vedic scriptures and the Bhagavad Gita, Shri Bhagavatam, is, you know, to surrender unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And also even at the end of this Bhagavad Gita, 
in 18. Also, I was thinking, I was discussing with someone today how men and women think, when you get into a relationship, you think, oh, we were meant for each other, you know, but that's not the fact. We were meant for Krishna. That's who we're meant for, you know, to serve Krishna. That's who we're meant for. And this last paragraph says, the living entity in his original position is pure spirit. He is just like an atomic particle of the Supreme Spirit. Thus Lord Krishna may be compared to the sun and the living entities to sunshine. We're sunshine. And we're working on our spiritual bodies. That's why the devotees shine. I remember in some of the pastimes of Srila Prabhupada, some um, materials who, have, who saw the devotees always talked about how they were shining. They were so bright, you know, because they were um, becoming, their spirit was shining through and they could, it could be seen. Because the living entities are the marginal energy of Krishna, they have a tendency to be in contact either with the material energy or with the spiritual energy. In other words, the living entity is situated between the two energies of the Lord. And because he belongs to the superior energy of the Lord, he has a particle of independence. By proper use of that independence, he comes under the direct order of Krishna. Thus, he attains his normal condition in the pleasure-giving potency. So I will open it up for comments or questions or additions or some interaction, as you like. Yes, the dim I just came from Oh, I remember you from? What time begins? Five. 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 Yes, they changed. They changed it. In the winter time, it's five. In the summertime, it's 5.30. So now it's 5. Yes. Today it's Yes. yes. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Anybody have any comments or additions? Some interactions? <laughs> Talking because the, the radio, the devotees. The I was comparing it to, you know, when, when a man and woman get together, they think, oh, I found the one and only, we just belong to one another. But that's not a fact. We belong to Krishna. You know? So when you're in a relationship, you offer that partner to Krishna. That's what the relationship is. You know that each one is part and parcel of Krishna. That's how you treat one another and, and you offer one another to Krishna. Anything else? Yes. Uh, here in the uh, last paragraph, Prabhupada mentioned here uh, uh, the words Mahaviva are significant in this verse. Prabhupada mentioned here. Uh, like Lord Shiva and Brahma. Uh, it is not possible for such incarnation of Rajaguna, Katsila and Tamagula ignorance to release uh, a conditioned soul from the causes of uh, Yes. So, uh, Krishna told in Bhagavad Gita that Vaitra uh, Guna Bhavarjuna, so we have to go beyond the three modes of material nature. So, but how is it possible to elevate it? Uh, entities like uh, Brahma and Shiva is almost like Lord Vishnu. So how they can influence by the this Rajaguna and Tamaguna? Because it's saying that they're they're under they're uh, also under Maya. They're in the they're also you see it says Maya means Mahamaya or uh, internal illusion? I think it means illusion. They can also get into illusion. Isn't it? They can get into illusion. I mean, if you, if you see some of the, I was mentioning in the Sri Bhagavatam, there are some instances where, you know, I said about how Brahma went into illusion. He's the creator. 
but because he was in illusion, he was going after his own daughter. And there's another instance when he was in illusion, when he saw Krishna as a child taking, you know, sharing prasadam with his friends and, you know, taking bites and sharing. And he had a question. He was like, is that really, is that really Krishna? Is he really Krishna? So that was when he stole all the calves and the cowherd boys and put them in a cave. And then, and I, they stayed there for a year. But in the meantime, Brahma went back to see what was happening. And Krishna had manifested again the cowherd boys and the calves. So Brahma went back to look in the cave to see if the boys and the calves were still there where he captured them. Then went back to where Brahma, where Krishna was and saw that there were other manifestations, you know. So the fact that they can come under illusion. Illusion in the spiritual world? Yoga Maya. That's different. Be an illusion. Does anyone want to add to that? Okay. Give give her the mic, please. So, but Ashina Prabhupada is also saying that the bona fide spiritual master can free us. And both Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva are the head of the Sampadaya. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, although people have described in different classes that, that before Brahma was illusion and now he's the head of the Sampadaya. But Lord Shiva, I think Lord Shiva has never actually illusioned as such. Mm -hmm. But he has control of the murder. Raju, I mean, Tamagund, isn't yeah. it? He, he works in it. But it's, um, he's a little special as we've been hearing. Maybe Chara Maharaj had one class on Lord Shiva's position. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he's not exactly the same. He's not the same, same. as Lord Vishnu, although he comes from Vishnu. Yes. I think they compare like yogurt and milk. Yes. Yes. In the Brahma Samhita. Yes. Yes. So, how about this question? Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva being the head of the Sampradaya, therefore they can liberate us. Yeah, I mean, if we worship them as them, they can't liberate us, right? Right. But if we accept them as our spirit, as we're in the Brahma Sampradaya, Brahma Sampradaya, right. Sitting Brahma as a spiritual master. Yes. In a chariot. Yes. So in that way, he can help us get to Krishna. Yes. Is that helping you? No? No. I don't think so. Okay, you want to, you, if you're not clear, do you want to? It did, if it didn't help. Yes, Baba. Is it coming? Oh, it's under the chair. Oh, we can put it over. Okay, there you go. Is that okay? Hare Krishna. Uh, what is the meaning of Devotee. <laughs> okay. You want to? Okay, tell her. Who devotes himself is devotee. Mm-hmm. One who devotes everything to Krishna. Yes. Himself to Krishna is devotee. Mm-hmm. Uh, Swift deliverer. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this um what what was the text again? 
Okay, do you want to share with us, please? Uh, the devotee does not desire any achievement other than pleasing the Supreme Personality of God. Mm -hmm. His life's mission is to please Krishna. Right. And he can sacrifice everything for Krishna's satisfaction as Arjuna did in the battle of Kurukshetra. The process is very simple. One can devote himself in his occupational and engage at the same time in chanting Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare This is what we were talking about, right? That you just devote, you please try to please Krishna. I'm sorry? Mm -hmm. That means uh, from the ocean of uh, uh, swift deliverer, swift deliverer, mm -hmm. Krishna is swift deliverer. Yes. Uh, Nations, isn't it? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else?